Yeah. Right. Now. Right. <laughs> We're on the main lake. Uh, we are now. Notice of motions. Okay. And more to come. So we are now on to item number 15, and Mr. McDonald is going to give us the benefit of his past experience. Thank you, just very briefly, <coughs> with this one. Hopefully this is the less of two contentious notices of motion. Um, I wouldn't say two evils, no. I'm not wondering about you than that. The, um, the, look, the reality with this is it's effectively just calling for a bit of a, a review into the way in which our temporary management delegations operate. Um, I think at a high level, when uh, if you think about the mechanism that we're using to do this, it's a notice of motion, which is uh, something that any councillor can bring to the table provided it's consistent with the, the rules to get it here, uh, calling on a um, you know, particular action to be taken. I think this is kind of the thing that you know, we probably could have, um, you know, I, I think it needs to be workshopped through with the council in conjunction with the chief executive. And I think the real benefit of it is it actually will put a, a very clear line in the sand um, between what sits at the council desk and what sits with council staff uh, to, to get to a situation. So I'm hoping that uh, others will indulge me in terms of just having this looked at uh, so that actually we don't end up in situations um, you know, like potentially we have. I just think it's incumbent on all of us when we do identify issues and to use the notice of motion process to do that and, and to bring something forward. So um, yeah, at a really high level, I just think it would be good to get some clarity around those rules uh, and, and what we uh, do in terms of what we delegate to council staff. So uh, yeah, that's kind of, kind of it really. Okay. And there's obviously staff advice attached. So we can move up. He's a mover. Yeah. Just a second. We've got all that. You must have a second. Yeah. We've already got that. A question? We've got questions. at the table for oh, questions. Oh, yes, sorry. And yeah. <laughs> you're quite right. And we have got uh, Andre has a slight amendment which uh, just took which the team have got. Sorry, Andre, I should have mentioned. That was one from yesterday, wasn't that, it? Yeah, that was mm. one from yesterday. And we've just incorporating it in. Uh, but it requires, I think, half of the council to vote to include it in the, the majority, majority to, to do it. 51%. So. To accept the amendment, yeah, and then vote. So you'd vote to accept the amendment, and then vote on the amendment. Yeah. <coughs> okay. Just waiting for it to come so up. So we'll just get it up, and then we can highlight it, so everyone's aware. It's just adding a bit of work to that. To it. Uh, so you want to add that to? Yeah. So there's. Extent? Again, there are, there's, there's two parts to it. There's the, well, no, what, I mean, if people don't want it included, they can just vote down accepting the amendment to the notice of motion. So, that's, yeah. So, sorry, where are we at? We're now with questions. Can I just check clarity over the road closures bit? I'm assuming that you mean temporary road closures because anything that's a formal road closure goes through a really full, extensive process. Yes. Yeah, yeah. So, I don't know, Andre, do you want to add something to yours, maybe, just so that? Yeah, yeah, I should. What I'm on about here. Well, uh, uh, and so a number of weeks ago, I put forward a notice of motion asking for this, but the notice of motion was declined. The reason cited that um, we already get sent Starwick notices. If we already got sent them all, I wouldn't be asking for it in the first place, but we don't get sent Starwick notices for all road closures. So in some cases, we might have a road closed for a number of months. Um, we don't necessarily get notified of it. We'll find out when a resident might come ask us a question. We can't answer it because we haven't been sent any information about it. The website may not tell us the information we need. Hence, we have to tie up a lot of time with going to the Chief Executive Office to ask for questions that we could have been answered if we were given the Starwick notice in the first place. So there's an efficiency to be found here. Um, I could list you about five or six road closures in my area. They're main thoroughfare roads, but because they don't have anyone necessarily living directly on where the road is closed, there won't be a letterbox <coughs> drop done. Um, but there's no notification sent to any elected members, um, and therefore the public aren't communicated with either, despite it being a road that they use every day. So all I'm asking for here is we find a way that when roads are going to be closed, it just flicks a note through. Uh, full warning to elected members, so then when residents ask them, they will know the answer, and also so elected members can communicate that with the public at no cost to the ratepayers. So I'm offering to help with communications for free. Pretty good deal. Good, good request. Sarah. Thanks. Um, question for Mary. Um, 
Thank you for the advice on this. There's a, a lot of work that goes into the temporary traffic management. How much is um, how much staff time will be taken up um, by the transport team doing a full review of all of the all of the traffic management um, planning stuff? Um, and will that potentially impact the delivery of things like surf and craft and those kind of things that staff are also currently working on? Sorry, um, uh, interpretation is that this is not a full review of the entire temporary traffic management system. That uh, it um, appears that some councillors were unaware of the scope of the traffic management when they passed the delegation or gave the delegation to the CE that was then passed down to our officers. And it was in particular what councillors were unaware of was the things around trials and pilots. Yep. So it is that um, area that we are proposing, as you'll see in the advice, is the area that we focus on in the review and uh, look at that area and see what is the best process for that. Um, if the <coughs> councillors wanted to review the entire process and uh, have a greater input, it would ground the city to a halt because you'll see that there's uh, about average of a week um, 2,700 traffic management plans. If we were to write reports and bring those to you to decide you would be meeting in here every day and, uh, and having to make decisions and we know how challenging that can be at times. <laughs> so so, so uh, we, we are not interpret we're just interpreting, reviewing yeah. that portion of it that the councillors have signalled that they were not aware was in the scope mm. when they made the delegation. So do you believe that the delegations themselves specify that? It's just that councillors weren't aware of it at the time. Uh, I d the d uh, delegation is not uh, doesn't specify in detail that. It talks about temporary traffic management as delegated. Uh, the interpretation from our legal people is, uh, from external legal advice, is that pilots and trials are within the scope of temporary. Uh, but that may not have been apparent to councillors when they made that delegation. OK, thanks. Uh, yeah, uh, sorry, Tim and then Jake. Yeah, um, just, uh, Andre, are, are all the roads council roads that you're getting the, 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 the breakdown is, or is it, is, is it a mix, or...? Oh, they're all council roads, yeah. OK. Yeah. Um, yeah, so, so we so so councils are aware that they're closed. It's just that they don't generally um, necessarily generate a start work notice like council works might. Cause, yeah, um, so, so Mary, I'm a bit confused because in all the years I've been here, I haven't there hasn't been an issue, or I've never realised an issue. And I don't want to speak for my colleagues on the Sprayden Kashmir Heathcote Community Board, but I think the information to us on temporary road management is actually very, very high. So I don't think, um, Sarah or, or Melanie, that we've ever really had an issue with this. So I, I'm just a bit confused of... So that, that's, I think that's why uh, we are not one... Um, we are, we'll, we'll give you some advice. There are two websites that are there that people yep, can go on and yep. have a look at road closures. There are uh, There is advice that goes out, but um, we would say don't look for the solution now um, the council has offered one solution, but we think it would be best actually if the review <coughs> identified wh what the problem is and where it is and came up with the best solution that is achievable and doesn't add a whole lot of burden and slow things down because otherwise it will have a capacity issue for staff and it will be funding implications. So let the review identify an uh, option and come back with it. Um, as you said, uh, it is the it's, um, we haven't had this problem occurring before, so it's, it is uh, worth looking at the problem that's occurring and finding a solution for it. Thank you. Okay, so before I go any further, I'd like to actually see what the appetite is for this. Uh, Andre's moving it, and Sam will be seeking the the amendment. So, the so addition. The addition. Yes, yeah, so it's, it's Councillor McDonald's notice of motion, so he's moved it. It's on the table. Councillor Moore has an addition that he's proposing. The meeting needs to agree, the majority of the meeting needs to agree for this addition to be added to the notice of motion. Yep. So, so, that's, so that's what we need. That's what I'm asking. 
So I will at it after debate. us. Is it yes. before or after? Debate first or not? After, since this or we have to decide Accept whether Andre's first. proposal will be accepted by the meeting. After that, the notice of motion still needs to be seconded, and then we can move into debate. Yeah. Right, so is everyone happy for Andre's proposal addition to go into the substance of motion? Ask a question of yeah, clarification. Well, I can say, all those in favour of Andre going in, okay. please. Sorry, I. There's a request for a division. There's a question from Councillor Johansson, I think, before you vote. Yeah, I think it's a bit hard to expect us to support something when we haven't even had a chance to ask questions to clarify it. So is it possible just to clarify? Because this issue has been raised previously at our informals and at community board. So I'm just trying to understand why we'd need a resolution or a notice of motion to get that advice back. And just from what I've heard staff saying, I just wanted to understand, are staff currently doing a look at um, these processes to, with an aim of improving them at the moment, or do they, will they only do it if the notice of motion passes? Can, can I clarify one point in that and why I've come here? I've been trying for over a year to start getting notified of road closures, and in a high growth area, there's road closures all the time because of waterworks, some last many months. I've gotten basically nowhere in that year. I've tried um, going through community board channels, tried notice of motion there, um, I've raised it at about five different elected members exchange and gotten nowhere, so I'm trying this way. Yeah. So, so yep. Staff are supporting the notice of motion to do the review, mm. to provide this advice back to us. Well, I just wasn't clear from the comments we just heard before from the, staff. Yeah. Well, the last notice of motion I put forth for this was declined outright. So, I, yeah. We'll so be told yeah. why. So, so he's clipping, third, he's clipping so it on the back so of the, Sam's one the advice as it goes through. On the, on the first part of it, uh, we had identified that if a review was going to take place, which area it would need to take place in and not the entire process. So that's the area of uh, temporary and uh, pilots and trials. Uh, there, we don't have a comment to make around uh, the second part of it, apart from the fact that if it, if it um, councillor do wish us to look at that, that they don't predefine the solution, that they actually let us look at the problem and identify the best solution rather than predefine the solution. Just for a little bit of clarity, but in answering what Tim was saying, that um, years ago there were no road closures. When we, a person I used to know, used to do uh, roading jobs, you had to leave the roads open no matter what happened in case a fire engine came along or something like that. Since the earthquakes came along, there's been a lot more of an appetite to close roads to enable contractors to do the work a lot better. I think we need to clarify that a bit, but that's come from central government because I used to do events for 100 years and until the last probably 15 years then the requirement to do traffic management plans for the yeah. smallest thing, so it wasn't council driving this, it's been directed <coughs> from central government. So, so members and mayor, I would just like to get off first base if that's possible. We need to know whether you are prepared to accept the addition that Councillor Moore has put in. Can we get there, whether it's a yay or nay? Or division to someone... Through whatever there? route, and then we can move into the full notice of motion, whatever that looks like. Okay, so we'll do the division on no Andre's... Question there was a question. Yeah, so if you don't want to know what's going on in your ward, vote no. <laughs> um, can I just suggest, can we se separate those two bits out? Because Split them out? We can't no, do that. sorry. Yeah. It's, yeah. Because it's, Sam's agreed uh, to support this addition to his notice of motion, and under standing orders, the meeting then has to agree in the majority that this addition is going to be included in the notice of motion going forward. So they cannot be separated out. Can I just clarify? Yeah. <coughs> just sorry, I'd just, just like to clarify. It, the only thing we're voting on in this position that is to act. Into yeah. the additional part, which is about to be highlighted, that bit. That is all you're voting on as to whether and to include that into the notice of motion. Thank you, Megan. And and then, if that passes. Sorry. Okay. So is everybody clear about that? Yeah. Right. So we're doing the division by the sound of it. Thank you. So remember, this is to just add the element. Add Andre's bit. <laughs> it's just a boss. It's just a boss. Okay, great. Uh, Councillor 
Four. Yes. Councilor Johansson. Deputy Mayor Potter. No. Councilor McClellan. No. Councilor Barber. Yes. Councilor Goff. Yes. Councilor McDonald. Yes. Councilor Kewen. Yes. Councilor Fields. No. Councilor Henstock. Yes. Councillor Scandrit? No. Councillor Harrison Hunt? No. Councillor Coker? No. Councillor Templeton? No, that's fine. Councillor Donovan? No. Councillor Peters? Yes. Mayor? Yep. Yeah. Eight yes, nine no. Okay, so that is declared lost. Yes. So we now go on to the original notice of motion from Councillor Macdonald. Yeah. So are we now, Sam? Are we now debating your notice of motion? Yeah. You need the seconder. Oh, Victoria. Um, so just. Again, now that it's been seconded, no further amendments or proposals can yeah. be. Brilliant, thank you. So we now go into debate on the notice of motion, which you will see in front of you. Right, here comes debate number one. Melanie. Can you bring it up on screen, please? Yeah, it's there, isn't it? Yeah. It's not It's down. Melanie? Dad, I have to do a project for school about the City Council and what ratepayers think of it. Are you a ratepayer? Oh yes son, unfortunately I am, replies Dad. A lot of wasted money in my view. So much bureaucratic nonsense. They take forever to get anything done and our rates just keep going up. That doesn't sound good Dad, says his son thoughtfully. We have to do some research too. I was reading in an article in the paper that the new mayor is making progress on cutting bureaucracy. The article says the mayor, that the mayor said the council has one less meeting per month and meetings have less business than they used to. A lot of other stuff is getting sorted out in the background. Oh, I hadn't heard that, said Dad. That's great to hear. I definitely want my hard-earned money to be spent efficiently. But what I don't get, Dad, is that there's this big fuss about council staff being able to do some trial traffic management projects for a cheap price. They sound like the kind of thing ratepayers would like. And I also read the mayor doesn't like them. And that doesn't make sense, son. I voted for the mayor and he said he was the man who got things done and he's good at spending money wisely, said Dad. My teacher said the council was thinking of spending more money to remove these trials. Bloody typical. Oh, sorry for searing, son. I've had enough. Dad, that's OK. I know you're upset. My teacher also said that the residents have a declining trust in council like it sounds like you do too. Well, son, it's not surprising when apparently even the elected councillors have no trust in council either. I agree, Dad. I heard that one of the boys in my cricket club has a parent that works in council. He's feeling bad that the mayor said something mean about his parent and refuses to apologise. Dad thought for a minute, looking surprised. That's bullying, son. That's not acceptable from leaders of our city. Make sure you're nice to that boy, son. I will, Dad. And let's hope we see some improvements with that council soon. I hear there's another rates rise coming, so I want to see some value for my money. Thank you. Have we got any other debate? Timothy. Yeah, thank you. Look, I, I just don't know where it's kind of broken down because I have never had any issue with getting information on our traffic management plans. Is it? Is there, a pro is there a problem? No, no. So I, I, I think it's a real shame that this has come up, and I do kind of reflect on the uh, speaker, Harrison McEvoy, who t spoke, you know, like to see councillors and 
just wait, se seemingly wasting time. And I'm sure that we could have sorted this out in one of our um, briefings. And I think that's, that's where it should have been, rather than wasting time around this table and wasting a lot of people's time. Um, I'm just really disappointed how we've got to this point and um, where we're going with it. So I can totally understand the sentiment, but I think there's a breakdown here, and not just with, between us and council staff, it's right across the board with us as well. So um, I'm not going to support this. OK, Sarah, and then Mark. Thanks. Um, I'll just start briefly by addressing Andre's issue, because I get it, like I have residents who um, come to me and I didn't know ahead of time. Um, there is a process and it's broken. We need to work out how to fix it rather than coming up with something new. But I don't think that um, adding it in here was the way to do it because I'm voting against the other thing, you know? Um, and otherwise I'd just be voting against it. So I'd rather try and work on it separately. However, this notice of motion implies that staff delegations are ambiguous. Yet I have not seen anything to support this. And I think we need to be clear that just because someone who is not a subject matter expert doesn't understand the scope of something <clears throat> doesn't mean the thing itself is, un is ambiguous, just that, that the person doesn't have the background knowledge and training to understand it. Sure, let's have a briefing so that councillors can learn more about the TMP delegations and ask some questions. But I'm certainly not going to vote for a motion that implies that staff have taken advantage of ambiguity. Our staff are already stretched past capacity, and I'd much rather they were focused on getting stuff done, the surf and the craft projects, the roving footpath crew and other projects, than spending precious time on paperwork. If councillors are upset about traffic management plans being used for trial pedestrian and cycle safety projects in our communities, then the notice of motion should have limited it to changing that and being clear that they disagreed with the current delegations, not implied that they were ambiguous. But let's just have a regular briefing first to understand the issue and then look at what to do. And remember that uh, ahead of the election, there was a meeting where mutual expectations were discussed that looked at lowering the number of meetings that we had, getting fewer consultations out. Thank you. Mark. Thank you. Um, I can see the sense in taking a look at the delegations and making sure that they're fit for purpose. Um, as a temperature of management trainer in my past, I know a little bit about temperature of management and how it works and where it can be used. Um, so I'm more than happy to see us go through a process and just make sure that the delegations we have delegated from the council to the staff are actually fit for purpose and that there's not any ambiguity that could cause any problems like we've had recently. So um, happy to support this and um, let's have a, a joyous track forward and try and get back on an even keel. Okie dokie. So, Kelly. Nick. Um, yeah, thanks. Uh, I'm in two minds here. I mean, on the face of it, um, I support uh, council staff doing their job and doing it well. But there have been times in my lived experience as chair of the White High Coastal Community Board where things didn't uh, go to plan. For instance, I got a phone call from a chap who um, wanted to know why there were newly painted yellow lines outside his dairy. And um, I said to him, look, you know, this, can't, this must have been the previous community board because I don't recall this coming before us. And then six months later, it did come before us. Um, and we voted it down and those yellow lines were painted out. Now, something is seriously wrong with the delegations when uh, an action happens six months before it comes to the due process. So that wasn't the only occasion. There are an, another couple, but I'm not going to uh, embarrass our council by bringing those up as well. I just think that there is, a, um, there is definitely something at play here that we need to look at, um, and so I will be supporting this. Victoria. Oh, thank you. I think <coughs> this motion is really about good governance. It's about uh, our processes. It's about scrutiny and it's about accountability. As councillors, it's our job to ask questions. And it's also our job to support and enable our CE to run a really good ship. And I think that this question, this motion, is raising a legitimate question about the appropriateness or otherwise of those current delegations. As a councillor, I expect accountability of decision making by our staff. And I also expect that we have appropriate checks and balances in place 
to ensure that staff are providing us with sound advice and are making good decisions when they're exercising their delegations. Now, the controversy created by these works would suggest that the checks and balances that are currently in place are not working, and therefore it is entirely appropriate that we ask our CE to review these delegations. Now, notwithstanding the obvious safety issues that have been raised, there are two major factors uh, that have influenced me to conclude that the delegations require review, and the first is that these have created significant and material change. We've heard people talk about that today. And the second is that they were purportedly undertaken to improve safety for pedestrians and cyclists while the museum was being redeveloped. Well, that's a five-year period, and five years is, tempor is hardly temporary in my books. And furthermore, Park Terrace is some distance from the museum, and the built environment around the Park Terrace end of it is quite different to Rolleston Ave. So this just doesn't wash with me. And it concerns me greatly that our staff didn't turn their minds to the likely controversy and the public backlash that th these worked have caused. So that's why I think it is entirely timely and it's appropriate that we ask our CE to review the delegations. Thank you, Victoria. Anyone else with the uh, James and then Andre? <coughs> I totally agree with what Victoria said, and it's kind of hard to, um, to add to that. The only thing that I, I would address, and it is probably the elephant in the room here, because this is why I think that it's important we take these steps, and I don't get any pleasure out of the situation uh, that we've been through, nor do staff, uh, when we go through things like Gloucester Street, Park Terrace, and ultimately that's why we're sitting here today dealing with this notice of motion and the one that's coming after that. Um, that's not fair, I don't think, you know, the frustrations on councillors, on management, on staff all throughout this organisation. It's actually not really fair on the community, but I think at this point, good governance is about saying, hey, the onus is on us. Um, at the end of the day, it's our head that's on the chopping block uh, with elections every three years, uh, and staff aren't coming to work to do a bad job, neither are elected members coming here to do a bad job. Everyone's trying to do their best, but there is a gap there somewhere. So this provides us the ability to do a bit of that stock take and say, Let's do a bit of a reset and provide best endeavours to get this right, because what has been happening, for whatever reason, isn't as good as what it could be. So let's reassess, make sure that we're on the same page, and ensure that what we've got and what, um, what we're delegating is fit for purpose. So I, I see this only as a positive thing, and I think it would be um, really sad if, if we didn't do that, because you know, we always need to keep looking at what we're doing and making sure that we're improving things where we can. Um, and the history has demonstrated that it hasn't been quite right, and I, for one, am keen to fix that up. So supporting this notice of motion, I think, will go a long way in achieving that. OK. Andre, please. Thank you very much. Eve, about five times a week um, in this job, um, people you know, they'll ask you, oh, how are you enjoying the job? And um, you'll say, yeah, you know, enjoying it. But everything in local government is a very long, drawn-out, tricky, bureaucratic process. And um, yellow lines is a good example, because if ever you're t talking to someone, they might need yellow lines in their street, and we go, cool, well, we'll make the request. And the residents say, how long will it take? Maybe, you know, a couple of weeks? It's like, oh, oh. Uh, actually, it's like, actually, mate, as per the Local Government Act, um, we have to then consult the affected neighbours. A report has to be generated. It's quite a long, extensive process. So currently, um, currently our staff are stretched. We've, we're putting a, we put a huge amount of work with them. There's only so many staff. So I actually have to say to someone right now, you're probably looking potentially 12, 18 months for yellow lines. Mm -hmm. So we do need to find efficiencies for staff. Um, we need to find a way to make things easier for staff, which is something that um, Mayor Major, I think, said very well in the campaign, is things take a long time. We need to find ways to make things easier for staff. Um, obviously, we have to find a sensible balance between efficiencies um, and consultation, making sure we're not um, going to have to come back to things later, absolutely. And I have got no real desire to want to make things more difficult for staff. However, um, I am quite comfortable with receiving this review um, and report with the facts that are in front of us. It is a conversation that we do need to have and should have. Um, we're a new council. We, we, we should look at these things, get briefed on them, find out what our options are. I, I don't see any harm in having that conversation myself. Um, in terms of uh, my amendment, uh, I spoke with Sam yesterday um, to ask him, and he was all too willing to look at changes to be made to this to to come up with something to make it work. Uh, so I hope that's what we do. If indeed it does pass, um, I will be voting for it. Thank you very much. Thank you. So, Tim. 
Um, just to wrap it up, look, thank you. These, oh. Well, you go, for, yeah, if Aaron yep. wants to go on the door. Yeah, he's wrapping. You're into it. Yeah, uh, I'll just, there's not a lot to add. It's kind of all been said from, from both sides. Um, the bit that surprises me around this is this is only a, a request. This is an, an action. This is a request for this to be looked at. It's not saying that it changes as of today. And that's the bit that surprises me at this table from the number of people that often ask for uh, request information and request things to be looked at. Um, most of the people around the table, you can normally pick how they're going to vote, uh, whether that's a good thing or a bad thing. I, pretty much you can draw it down a political line and the votes will go certain ways. This is no different to that. That was proven just before with the addition of Andre's point. Uh, the one person in the room that did shock me, though, was Yanni. Um, and I will call you out this time, mate, because normally you are the one requesting information. You are the one asking for things to be looked at. And you didn't support that going in. That shocked me. Everyone else at the table, on either side, I'm not shocked by, because they always tend to vote that way. But your one did disappoint me, so I'm just going to say that publicly. The rest of you, I know how you're going to vote, so I won't be surprised at the result in a couple of minutes' time. OK, Yanni. Um, yeah, thank you. Uh, I just wanted to reflect on the fact that it seems very uh, inefficient to me that legitimate concerns that councillors have raised through multiple channels, community board, informal briefings, probably Office of the CE, I suspect, I know I have around the notification, that we have to get a notice of motion amended to add something um, to do that. Like, it, there must be better ways of doing it. I've heard what people have said this morning, and I just think this is uh, not a good use of our time to, to have to go through a formal resolution uh, to, to do this, when we actually know um, you know, I think for all of us that were in the room when we voted on that um, could reflect on uh, lessons learnt from uh, either approving work or not asking the right question or having the right resolution. But when I've reflected on my own understanding of it, I, I recognise that I've got improvements to make as an individual because of what I didn't pick up in that report. And I'll take that on myself and next time a report like that comes in front of me, I will certainly be asking different questions of staff to get an understanding of what's being agreed uh, or what's not, or if required, putting resolutions to ensure that um, what I expect should be a, a decision would be a decision that, that we would make. So, yeah, I just don't think that we need formal resolutions uh, through this process um, to review delegations that already exist um, around the ambiguity, when I actually think the delegations are actually really clear. It's just how we make decisions around those that that is the issue. Now, um, it also shouldn't take a notice of motion um, to get people notified of works happening in the area. I would hope staff would simply go away and just do that without requiring a notice of motion to effectively tell people when a road's shut and is impacting on, on them. And, you know, I think um, the irony is, that, or the thing that I'm struggling to understand is why both of these notice of motions were accepted but the other notice of motion to get notification to residents was excluded and rejected. And to me, that makes no sense. But I think we have internal processes where we should raise these issues together. We should try and work together constructively as a council to address concerns. Um, but I don't think these notice of motions today really help us do that, which is why I'm not supporting them. Okie dokie. So everyone's... Oh, yeah, I'm sorry, yes, yes. Okay, we'll just wrap it up. Um, I, uh, Yanni, the irony's not lost on me about wasting time when I've counted on my phone that you've taken two hours today on unprompted amendments and had Who's to get staff to... Oh, sorry, you used AI to do your one. <laughs> well, it's very crap. No, look, I, I think the, um, the irony isn't lost in that, though, and, and I think Victoria and James uh, put it really well, which is this is actually about good governance. You know, you, we've, people have talked about the just being able to do things and go and talk to staff about it, but actually when something's not working, you bring it to the council table. We're an elected council. This is in the public domain where people can have a say. So I'm just sort of surprised that a, uh, what seems like a majority of people don't want to have a look at a system. You know, I would have thought that, like Aaron said, there's actually no decisions being made. We're having a review into delegations that, in my view, are not working. Uh, I would have thought if you can't do it here, you know, for people that talk about being transparent, I'm unclear as to why you'd want to do it behind closed doors. So, you know, actually, voting on this now gets public advice and we can put it in a line in the sand once and for all. 
You know, the staff have talked about the delegations that exist already. Uh, Mary sat at the end of the table and said, you know, there potentially are issues within them that people might not understand. If we can't do that here, then why are we here? So good governance, in my view, is when something's not working, getting a review, and I would just be astounded if people wouldn't support that. Um, but again, maybe it is one of those political divides where, you know, um, ultimately ideology wins the day and not good governance. Okie dokie. <coughs> so with that, I will put the nudge to motion. Or okay, far away. Yep. Thank you, Katie. Councillor McClellan? Yes. Councillor McDonald? Yes. Councillor Hinstock? Yes. Councillor Moore? Yes. Councillor Skander? No. Councillor Harrison Hunt? No. Councillor Coker? No. Councillor Fields? No. Councillor Peters? Yes. The Mayor? Yes. Councillor Templeton? Cal, no. Councillor Barber? Yes. Deputy Mayor Cotter? No. Councillor Johansson? No. Councillor Donovan? No. Councillor Goff? Yes. Okay, so that is Mr. lost. Mayor, Mr. Mayor, could I just make a comment, if that's okay? Um, Here, feel free. I, I uh, just want to say that I do respect Council's uh, right to debate processes and systems around the Council ta table, that that's what you're here for. I think it is most unfortunate when you criticise staff in the public forum when they do not have a right of reply, um, and uh, which is what you've done today, uh, when you moved off the process and the system and started up bringing criticisms of projects and things staff had done, I think that was most unfortunate uh, when staff do not have the right to defend themselves or reply to those examples. So thank you. Thank you. So now 16. Yep. Yep. So now we move